So during his first time being grilled under oath on Capitol Hill, Google CEO Sundar Pichai kept cool under pressure. But one of a few hot button issues that came up was the potential for a censored search service in China. Pichai kind of danced around the issue, didn't give a specific definitive answer, but take a listen. Right now, we have no plans to launch in China. We, have, we don't have a search product there. Uh, our, our core mission is to provide users access to information, and getting access to information is an important human right. So we are always compelled across the world uh, to try hard to provide that information. And, but right now, there are no plans to launch search in China. Joining us now is Congressman Darrell Issa, a member of the House Judiciary Committee who was at Pichai's hearing today. Congressman, good to see you. Uh, we'll ask you about China, but there was the other issue of bias at Google. And Mr. Pichai says that Google is not politically biased at all. That's what he said today under oath. Do you believe him? Well, I believe he believes it, uh, but the direction of my questioning was actually one that I think he's going back to look at, which is since there's an indication of bias in outcome, can you please work backwards to find out where in the algorithms these things occur? Because many of the members on the dais on the Republican side brought out specific examples that showed that the outcome was not even where it otherwise should be. Uh, and, you know, some of them are, are well-known cases, some less so. Daryl, uh, what do you what do you, do you think it's possible that the real the real goal is just is making as much money in any marketplace they're in, and that just manifests itself in in, in this country perhaps a liberal bias, but in China a censorship bias or whatever it takes in that particular market, and that's really what's driving the company. And we're looking at the symptoms, not the actual root cause of the problem. Well, exactly. I mean, when you, the the reality is, corporations and their fiduciaries including the CEO, have an obligation to maximize the profit of the company to short term and long term. And so all the discussion about creeds and so on also go to that same source. Right now, Google, because it wouldn't give in to China's demands, has been locked out of China. There is clearly a, a looking toward can they get back into China and can they do it without the rest of the global market shunning them uh, because of their activity. And I'm sure they're balancing exactly that. C uh, Congressman, this is uh, Gary Smith in uh, Florida. I I'm curious, when I look across the spectrum, I see bias from everyone from the Washington Post to CBS to Time Magazine. It, it, as far as I can tell, Google's doing nothing illegal, biased or not biased. Why are we even concerned if they are biased? Well, uh, the reality is that unfair trade practices uh, are, are not an insignificant problem. If, if you disadvantage a customer and you advantage a customer, the FTC has authority. There are lots of reasons that when we talk about political bias, we are also talking about unfair trade practices. Remember, they have said they don't do it. So if they say they don't do it, instead of, hey, we have every right to do it, then there's a legitimate debate of, is the outcome unfair in some way? You know, let's, let's remember, though, today was more than anything else about people's right to privacy. This hearing, forget about people on both sides that got into sideshows, this hearing was substantially about, if I want to turn off your tracking of me, if I want to unload the data you collected from me, are you open and transparent so that I can do that? And that was where I think the most important questions came, where Sundar did pretty well, but not, not perfect in showing that Google is a pretty good actor, but could be better. Yeah, in fact, as Congressman, I'm glad you raised that because there have been a number of stories out in the last couple of weeks saying that no matter what you do, Google is not only tracking you, but is keeping records of all kinds of information about you. And I think people are beginning to get nervous that they really don't have control at all over what Google is, is recording about their whereabouts and their activities, uh, even their conversations and their emails. I mean, there have been indications that emails are sort of searched uh, episodically or through algorithms for information that could help uh, vendors and supply, you know, suppliers, shoppers, et cetera. What did he say about that? Because I think that's what worries people more than some of these other issues. 
Well, this is one of the areas in which I don't think we did nearly enough to, to get that out. And part of the reason was that, in a, in a sense, you almost need the technical expertise that he has in order to have a conversation. You know, one of the things that he said that was accurate, which is Verizon and Comcast and all these other players, uh, including every, every place you search, they're also part of that collection. In other words, if you're on your home Wi-Fi, that home Wi-Fi is actually able to tell me, uh, if, you're, if you're surfing my site, where you are. So some of those things, he has a legitimate right to say that we, the problem is bigger than Google. Some of his answers were fair, which is, we know that almost everybody, if they say, show me a restaurant, wants a restaurant near them, not a restaurant just at random. So some of it was good discussion, but very clearly when it got to the dashboard and your ability to know what's being tracked and to turn it off, he just simply said they were improving it and they would continue to. He didn't say by any means that it's easy, it's tutorial, and definitive. And I think that's where a lot of people still don't have the trust that is going to be necessary, not just at Google, but throughout the, the Internet, because they're 90% they're of search, but they are less than 10% of the people who collect data. Congressman Issa, I have two questions, one on uh, both about today, but very different. First, um, do you think that Google and Facebook and these type of companies that are driving advertising and media should be regulated like a media company? That's one. And then secondly, I'd like to hear your view after we all watch the 10-minute uh, reality TV show in the White House today. It does not seem like there's going to be a vote where there's $5 billion of border uh, funding. At least that's my opinion. And I would like to hear your view. If that doesn't take place, do you think we'll have a government shutdown? And where would you be on that? So two different questions, but both about today. Sure. And, uh, and let's, let's take them in that order. Uh, you know... Very, very clearly, there is a question of everyone who's advertising has different rules, uh, including the difference between on-air broadcast and cable and Internet. And there, there is some serious work for Congress to do. To, and there was a question today, which actually was a good one, which is that if, let's just say, a Republican and a Democrat are both advertising, how do they know they're getting the same price? Well, his answer was, well, it all depends on where you're being placed. In other words, we have no idea whether similar parties, but looking for two different set of voters, are going to find very different prices. Well, that's the kind of thing that can be tackled by a company like Google or Facebook, and they can assure the Federal Election Commission that they do have a plan for fairness. So, And those Congressman, are I'm going to have to force a push question on his second question because we have to go, but will there be a government shutdown? Your best guess, yes or no? I don't believe there'll be a government shutdown. I agree that there will be a compromise of less than $5 billion. Uh, in border wall, but not less than $5 billion in funding the men okay. and women who stand at the border. Congressman, great to see you again. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it.